Hello everyone and welcome to another How Lou Sees It video. This video is a special video doing it for AAPI Heritage Month or Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And uh, so what I've done is I've just went through my game collection and grabbed uh, the ones that really stuck out to me as having some sort of AAPI uh, theme to it or coming from a history or designers uh, that I knew of that I uh, pulled these 23 games and I'm just going to run through those quick and kind of show you and talk to you a little bit about each one. Uh, if there are reviews that I've done in the past for these games I'll go ahead and post them uh, links to the reviews in this video. And there's also some games in here that I haven't done reviews yet, and I hope to do reviews of them in the future. So, go and get down to it. So, chess. Number one, chess was actually, uh, came from India. And uh, have my lovely Harry Potter Lego set here to show that off. But there are some other really great uh, strategic, abstract uh, two-player strategy games that we're also going to talk about today. But chess has to be one of the most popular uh, games, especially in the States as far as abstract strategy games. Chess is really popular here. Uh, I will be covering Go at the very end of this video, which uh, really is actually more, uh, I think has even more of a presence in... Uh, like China and Japan and those those countries over there. So let me get that one out of the way here. So chess, yes. The other thing I wanted to talk about is Hanafuda. Now I actually just did a review of this beautiful deck from Pencil First. Uh, and I'm not really going to open up very many of these other games, but I did want to show you again here... Uh, I will post a full video, but Hanafuda cards are very unique in that they're very tiny. Uh, they are also made out of like a paper, almost like a, a thick, uh, like a somewhat thick uh, cardboard with these paper uh, that wraps around it uh, with these beautiful pictures. And it's a very uh, beautiful uh, deck here. Uh, there's different kinds. It's interesting, Nintendo actually, before they made video games, made Hanafuda decks in Japan, and they still make Hanafuda decks. You can look them up, uh, Nintendo Hanafuda decks, uh, spelled like this, Hanafuda. Uh, Koi Koi is a very popular game that you play with that deck of cards. There's some other variants. Uh, this Pencil First version is really great. Uh, it gives you good understanding of the rules. It's a beautiful, beautiful illustration, um, illustrated deck here. Just a really great production from Pencil First. But uh, Hanafuda decks are really, really cool. They are 12 suits represented each month, uh, each highlighting different uh, type of flower for every month and uh, four cards in each suit. So it kind of flipped on its head from our your traditional deck of cards that you may be used to. So Hanafuda, very cool. All right, what else do we have in my stack here? We have uh, My Star. This game's been around for quite some time. Uh, I believe now, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is the designer of Love Letter, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, so I think it might be, but maybe it's not. Uh, but My Star, this was published by AEG uh, years ago. And uh, this one highlights the geisha. Uh, you are basically, each round, you take on one of these geishas and you are either helping uh, enhance your different areas of expertise uh, and then having these different customers come and trying to get score points that way. It's a... Uh, very, very fun card game. This was uh, for three to six players. My Star, published by AEG. Let's see what else we got in the stack. Next in my stack, we have Sutaku. Sutaku, this is a really fun push your luck 
dice rolling game. This was published uh, also years ago by Smirk and Dagger Games. Uh, the dice are actually really pretty cool. They're a nice chunky dice. Let me just pull one of these out here. They have the, uh, I believe they're Japanese characters uh, for the numbers. I'm sorry if I'm mistaken there, I believe it is. There's like a little reference here. There's also uh, a little thing where you can actually have this. This also has the reference of the dice on there. But really, really cool, a nice chunky dice. Uh, you're rolling three dice at a time, trying to stack dice in ascending order. Um, not going into all the rules specifically, but it's it's a really fun push your luck dice rolling game. You have 12 dice in here. Uh, very, very fun. Love this game. It's a really uh, great push your luck dice rolling game. Sutaku, published by Smirk and Dagger Games. All right, Tatsu. Now the packaging here was uh, my least favorite thing of this game. I actually really like uh, this game. It's, uh, this designer was actually the designer of Hive, uh, which is grown in popular quite a bit, popularity quite a bit. A great abstract two player strategy game. This is a uh, similar uh, with, a, it's a two player, abstract strategy game. It has some similarities to Batgammon as you're moving these, uh, your tokens, pieces along the board. Uh, they represent different dragons and you are trying to basically eliminate all of one type from your opponent. Uh, so all of their vine dragons or all their water dragons, all their uh, fire dragons, etc., or just eliminate uh, any from the current play. So going around in opposite directions it's it's quite a fun game it can get a little lengthy uh there's a lot of luck involved there's a, some good strategy but uh more luck than uh like hive i would say and those sort of things but this is really fun this is tatsu and uh published by gen 42 games This one here, I actually reviewed not too long ago, came in this packaging here, Nar uh, Naruto Shippuden. Uh, this is just a themed Yahtzee, so I won't spend a lot of time on that, but very cool. It came in like this little ramen bowl type thing with like ramen type ingredients uh, for the kind of dice roller. So pretty cool that uh, came from the Op Games. See, this is a cooperative game, Hanabi. This one got a lot of buzz and, and for good reason. It's a really popular uh, cooperative game. It's really fun to kind of introduce people to games with new mechanics that they may have not seen in other games before. This one specifically, you have these firework cards, but you are holding them so that you actually cannot see what your own cards, what you are holding but you can see everyone else's. You're holding them outward, outward facing. And you give clues and you're trying to help uh, together play these cards in sequential order. Uh, and so very, very fun uh, cooperative game. Uh, this one I think was two to five players. Uh, really, really fun. Uh, one that we tend to pull out, you know, during New Year's or 4th of July, you know, firework celebrations. But other than that, it's a very small, compact game that's really, really fun. This this version here, published by r, &R Games, uh, Hanabi. Very fun. Very cool game. Sushi Go. Sushi Go, this one's been out for a while too. This one was published by Game Right Games. And two to five players. Uh, it is a very simple uh, card drafting game. So you shuffle the cards, you go out hand of uh, cards to everybody. You simply choose a card, put it face down in front of you, pass them along, everyone flips over, choose a card from what was just passed to you, pass on. And you play that like through over three rounds and the cards score differently. Like if you have pairs of tempura, you get that and you see the beautiful, fun illustrations, uh, sashimi, 
you get uh, three of those and you get 10 points. These are just simple points. There's all the sorts of cards there. Now, I actually don't have my other version of this. Uh, I believe it's at work right now, but uh, they also have Sushi Go Party. Uh, this one is uh, more limited in its, you know, as it came out. It's still really, really fun. Nice travel size. Sushi Go Party is in a tin, probably uh, three to three times as big as this. It's uh, fairly large and it's got uh, more uh, card options that you can choose from. You kind of swap out what you play with. You play with a certain number of these types of cards, certain number of these types. Adds a lot of variability to it. Uh, so highly recommend Sushi Go Party just because of the, the variation that it adds. Very, very cool. Plus it can go up to, I believe, eight players and this one's two to five. So uh, it also has some good options to kind of span the player count, right? Of, hey, just two players these cards work a little bit better. Uh, use these ones in like larger player games, that sort of thing. So Sushi Go, Sushi Go Party. Published by Game Right. Uh, well, I, I won't skip ahead yet, but we do have Sushi Roll, which we'll talk about. It's a dice game uh, that was basically um, developed from Sushi Go. We have Tokenoko. Uh, this one uh, also designed... By Ention Baza. Let's throw out. He, he's a very, very popular designer. I uh, also designed Hanabi here. But uh, Tokunoko, this is the original version. I think they've come out with kind of an updated version as well. There's deluxe versions out there. Uh, but this is a really, really fun game. Uh, two to four players, I believe. Yep, two to four. Uh, it comes with this cute little panda figurine and the gardener. And with all of these little, uh, I believe they're wood, wood or plastic, I can't remember. I feel like they're wood, painted wood, but you have these little bamboo pieces uh, that as you move the gardener around, you have different weather events. So at the beginning of your turn, you get to roll this die, has different kind of a bonus or uh, action type thing that will, you know, be different each time, some luck there of uh that but you're moving the gardener around basically to grow this bamboo to meet certain requirements on cards as they f are those fulfilled those requirements like hey i need this force four high on a water piece as soon as that happens i will be able on my turn I'll be able to score that card and get some points or the bamboo uh gets eaten by this little panda and the panda moves around you can move the panda as an action and eat a piece of bamboo and you may need to turn in a certain uh combination of uh, bamboo like three green or one of each or something like that and that will give you points uh so you're growing this garden the tiles come out you're growing the bamboo eating the bamboo very very cool game uh, that is Tekunoko. Uh, this one was published uh, by Matagot uh, and Bombix. So, very, very cool. Love me some some pandas. Tokunoko, very cool game. Tokaido. Tokaido, very popular game. This one, very beautiful. Uh, love the cover. They actually, I think, have just come out with another like version of this. But... Very beautiful game, uh, very simple. You are taking turns moving along this path. Uh, and as you move along the path, the, you are basically choosing what options you're going to do. You can either you know, take some time to paint a scenery or you can uh, donate money to the temple or you can, you know, as you get into the inns or uh, the, the rest stops here, you're able to get some food cards and different things you're collecting uh combinations of cards and different things it's a very beautiful game to kaido this is pub this version was published by fun forge i believe they're still the ones publishing that but not positive very beautiful uh game very fun to kaido all right, this one's uh, very different than the other ones that we've seen. This is a dexterity game. This is Mackie Stack. This was published by Blue Orange Games. 
And uh, this one here is really fun because there's uh, two different ways that you can end up playing and it kind of switches back and forth. But there are two sets of these. There's like a little mat, cardboard mat here. And then you have like a soy sauce and some different shaped kind of sushi. And then there's these little or like foam masks. And so depending on the card and challenge, you are either working as a team to try to stack them in the way that they need to, but each player can only use one finger. And so my, me and my partner are trying to use our only one finger each to lift these and stack them uh, in the combination that they need to. You can also do it in mask mode where it comes up in mask mode, your partner, one partner has that on and they're trying to stack these uh, in order uh, and according to the card and they are trying to describe to their teammate, okay, do this, do this, okay, and then you need the bowl and it needs to be upside down or whatever it is. So that is a very fun team dexterity game, Mackie Stack, published by Blue Orange Games. Very cool. All right, let's go here. Shobu, uh, which means game, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but this is a, a great two-player strategy game, abstract strategy game, where you are like moving one piece and then you are you kind of replicate that on a board uh, that's really not that same color. Uh, so I'd be able to move one of these other ones. You're trying to push off your opponent's colored stones off of one of the four boards. If you're successful with that, you are the winner. Uh, very, very fun, very cool uh, game here. Uh, the boards uh, are very basic. I, I love the natural stones used. I think it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, Shobu, very cool abstract strategy game. Uh, the boards and stuff weren't stained quite as dark as I thought. I hope they would. They're almost like a cherry, light cherry on the darker. I would like to, I'll, I'll probably just restain them at some point. I haven't done it yet, but uh, very fun game. Shobu, this one published by Smirk and Dagger or their uh, other line, Smirk and Laughter Games. Uh, very cool. All right, this is another one that you may or may not have heard of. This is, is Suro. There's another version uh, that's like a C version. Uh, they may have had another version come out. I'm trying to remember, but this is the original Suro, the game of the path. This one's cool because it runs two to eight players and the games are very, very quick. Uh, and you can play this with easily with kids. It's a great family game, great group game to play. But uh, you have these tiles and you play these uh, tiles that have these different paths on them and you have play it in front of your stone and your stone ends up following the path as you go along. You may end up moving other stones uh, and you're trying to just stay on the board. If you fall, play something or someone else plays something and you your stone follows that path off the board, then you're out of the game. And uh, it's very, very simple rules, very easy to learn, very quick game, but uh, it's, it's fun, Suro. Pagoda. This is another one that's been around for a while. This is uh, AEG, published by AEG and Pegasus Spiel. The, uh, this is a reviewer copy sent to me by AEG back in the day. Uh, and it is a two-player, uh, again, just two-player game. It takes 30, 45 minutes to play, but it's, it's a very fun. You're utilizing these cards to build columns and construct these floors that have these other things and you're trying to basically build these different pagodas. So you have these very cool kind of 3D element as you're building up. There's no dexterity element uh, to this really, uh, but it's just a really cool to kind of see those get built. Uh, so that is pagoda. All right, let's talk 100 Tori. So I actually was just sent uh, the expansion to the 100 Tori Diverging Paths. 
unboxed it, you know, got everything out, read some of the rules and started looking at it. I haven't had a chance to play this yet. Uh, and so I wanted to, to review these together. And so look forward to that and check back to this as I get it posted. Hopefully I'll repost this back into this YouTube video. But very, very fun game. Uh, the 100 Tori, uh, this one published by Pencil First Games. Uh, as always, great production value, but very cool tile laying game where you're choosing where to place this and you're trying to place this so that you have these paths that go through these different uh, tori, uh, these little gates, if you will, uh, and you're able to get certain tokens and as you get those different tokens, uh, you get different uh, additional bonus points. Uh, there's there's lots going on here. It is one to four players, so it does have a solo mode, as well as the expansion. Uh, it is very, very fun, very cool game. I like this one a lot. This is 100 Tori by Pencil First, one to four players. And one to four players, the expansion adds uh, quite, a, quite a bit of options, different modules you can play with, so very, very cool, the 100 Tori. Ooh, we're getting closer. Uh, this one is Hawaii. Uh, this one was published a while ago as well. This was one of the first games, the sets that I was sent to review from Rio Grande Games back in the day. Uh, but Hawaii is a really fun strategy game. Uh, and you're on this island, you have your own little island, you go and really kind of unique action system as far as like uh, where to go on the island and if you end early and you try to get these other op you know options, but there's different ways of scoring, you're set collecting or uh, trying to get one of each type of thing. There's all sorts of different ways to score points in this uh, strategic game. Uh, very cool, uh, very Euro feel, uh, Hawaii. Uh, this one published by Rio Grande Games. Um, uh, I think it was around 2011. There's another great, uh, family, uh, game, uh, or for kids, great game for kids and families. This one's called Dragon Market, published by Blue Orange Games, two to four players. This one is very reminiscent for me, the feel of like a game like Labyrinth where you have the, the, the tiles and you're pushing the tiles and changing uh, the layout of the labyrinth and you're trying to go around and collect things. Uh, that, I had a really strong feel of that type of game with Dragon Market, but really cool because what you have here in, is you have these boats that you can either flip around or move or move your person from boat to boat and you're trying to go collect these different sets of uh, tokens from the market and so you're just running around these different boats shifting these boats around moving them around and kind of block people and so very very cool if you like labyrinth uh, I think you will really enjoy this one as well uh, very cool this one two to four players published by Blue Orange Games Dragon Market all right let's grab this one Sushi Roll, uh, so we talked about Sushi Go. This one's cool, you uh, are rolling dice, and then as those dice are rolled, then you are passing them, as uh, they included these little cardboard pieces where you can have the dice so you can easily pass them, uh, and uh, they look like the little conveyor belt, like in the, I've just seen on like YouTube videos and shows and stuff of like these little sushi going around on conveyor belts, but. Uh, very cool. You, again, are trying to get certain uh, sets and different things and score each round. You get the little score tokens. Uh, but very, very fun dice version of Sushi Go called Sushi Roll. Also published by Game Right Games. All right. King of Tokyo. You think of all Godzilla and those great 
Monsters, Richard Garfield here, uh, famous game designer. Uh, he had, this one's been out for a while now. There's quite a few different expansions. There's also like a King of New York. Uh, but we just played this recently uh, with a, a group. Uh, and it's, it's just so much fun. Uh, rolling the dice uh, and you're either trying to get points and or just be the last monster standing. You can do damage to the other monsters. Very much take that uh element to this but lots of fun you have energy you can use to get these cards to upgrade your monsters uh and very very fun this is king of tokyo two to six players uh and it's it's always a hit king of tokyo uh, published by yellow so ooh, we can get down here this one chin I believe that's pronounced. Uh, this one's a uh, Rainer Knizia, a very uh, famous game designer as well. This one published by r, &R Games. Uh, this one here, you are two to four players. You are trying to place these tiles, a uh, tile laying game, and you have these different kind of pagoda type pieces that you are putting out onto there to score these different regions. So it's a little bit of kind of like a area control type game uh, but it's got some simple rules uh, and again doesn't take that long to play uh, very very fun uh, chin uh, very cool this one designed by Reiner Knizia and published by r, &R Games uh, very fun it works great as two player as well all right Blue Lagoon Blue Lagoon uh, this one I feel like this one came out within the last few years this is 2018 um so blue lagoon this one's published by uh blue orange games also designed by reiner knizia it's got some great uh artwork it gives you that very you know moana uh feel to it uh, with that cover uh but very very fun game also kind of an area control uh type game but there's elements of Putting that out there and trying to have control of these different islands give certain points and you're also collecting you know different fruits and different things like that for points uh very very fun two to four players on this one blue lagoon just fantastic games in this genre that are really really fun and there are a lot of them as you can tell we are pulling up the last two here. This, I did re a review of this set uh, from Yellow Mountain uh, a while back. This is a Mahjong set. So it's got a little book here, an American Mahjong, Learn to Play. You know what? Mahjong is kind of, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it's simple, but it's confusing because of like the, many different ways that you score and there's like such an emphasis on like hey this is how you set up the game each time and this is how all the tired you know th it's just like this thing but if you think about you know mahjong is just one of those very popular games that you see a lot and uh these are uh example of some of the the tiles here this is the illustration you have this version has the little koi on the back which is pretty cool but you have just the different symbols and again you're collecting different sets and uh, but this is a, a nice a nice set from uh, Yellow Mountain Imports uh, with this they have all sorts of different uh, styles this have uh, different uh, tile holders here uh, with uh, an area to hold points there's different ways that you can hold points this one included these type of coin that you can stick on there for different points uh little pusher sticks so very very nice set uh and that is mahjong sorry i've got the rules here so there's, there's all sorts of different sets that you can get into and try. You can also, you know, do some of the online stuff. And last, but certainly not least, one of my favorite uh, abstract 
strategy games that I really enjoy that I'm really not that good at yet is Go. And I wanted to end with end with this one. Uh, this game has been around for thousands of years and uh, is fantastic. There's all sorts of different versions out there of Go. Um, you made my first kind of uh, exposure to the game Go was actually in the movie A Beautiful Mind. Uh, there's a scene where they're playing Go. And again, the, the rules of Go are very, fairly simple and straightforward. But the strategy behind it and being able to, to master it is is going to take a lot it's one of those you know takes a lifetime and uh it's really really fun now there's a lot of different versions out here these uh two sets are actually both from yellow mountain imports uh which we just talked about this is just a magnetic go set uh that's pretty basic you just have like these little plastic pieces with magnetic uh magnets uh in the bottom of them uh but a great travel set you know very convenient fold up and you just have this ready to go um a good a good way to kind of start in with go then you have like the actual like nice nice set so you have like these different boards made out of bamboo and uh, or different it can be different materials this is your full uh, go board. They also have some that are uh, quite a bit thicker. Uh, they may have like legs on them or whatever. Um, just really beautiful version here. Uh, and I'll pull out the stones as well for the Steel Mountain Imports. Is, this is just a beautiful set. Uh, have a full review on this that I can post in the chat. This board also has uh, one here on the other side. So a lot of times when you begin playing go the big board is just so overwhelming you want to really play on a smaller board to get used to uh the mechanics and the strategy and it does change as you open up the board but um definitely recommend uh the ability so like on this one even i mean with the bigger boards you can section them off yourself uh to play smaller uh areas but this is really nice to have it double-sided and uh, able to have that on this other side. Uh, but yeah, it's the game. You take turns. You're playing uh, really on the intersect. You're playing on the intersections instead of uh, with, you know, like chess and checkers. You are playing on the actual squares. In this, you've got a nice little case here for the bowls and the stones really really cool uh these usually have this open you can keep your capture your opponent's captured stones in like the lid here which is nice um but these stones there's all sorts of different types of materials you can get with the stones there's different uh, versions of the stones you can get where these are both concave on both sides uh there's some that are flat so that uh they lay flat on the board i like the the double concave myself these are a really really nice set of stones uh you have like a very specific type of stone uh that these black ones are made out of uh that if you hold them up to the light uh you might be able to see it this way uh, you might see kind of a greenish glow or tint to it if you hold it up to the light it really, really shines through, uh, and you can see kind of this greenish tint to them. But on the board, they look black, and they are just beautiful. They feel really great. Uh, you can, like, oil them. I actually went through and oiled them and uh, first. Uh, don't need to do that again because your hands' uh, oils will keep those nice. But they're just really, really nice feeling stones. And, like, there's a very much a, a, a culture uh, to this since it's been around for so long as, as, you know, a certain way that you're supposed to, like, pick up the stone and play the stone. 
and it's just kind of like this iconic sound to it of it being played on the board. But very, very fun game. It's an area control type game of you're trying to section off different areas and basically those intersections that you have uh, that you've encompassed uh, are going to be worth points and any captured stone of an opponent is worth points at the end of the game. But Go is really, really fun. Uh, and it's one of those games that I think everyone should learn how to play. Uh, it's really, really cool. There's also other games that you can play with a Go set, like Gomaku or these different things of, instead of like an area control type game, you're just simply trying to get five stones in a row. Uh, there's different variants and versions. Uh, the game Pente kind of stemmed from that. Uh, but... That is the end of my video of AAPI, Asian America Pacific Islander Heritage Month themed games that are great to pull out uh, anytime, honestly, but wanted to kind of give a video to highlight all these wonderful games that either have that history from, uh, you know, those, those Asian countries, Pacific Islander countries, and uh, have those theme as you saw we just went through 23 games uh maybe more maybe i missed a few but a lot of great games to check out great themed i love a good theme so you know when like any sort of holiday rolls around i love finding games and having games to play you know on pi day and pull out all the pi themed games and uh, with Chinese New Year or uh, this month, uh, we've been uh, with my uh, kind of tabletop club at work. We've had multiple game events where we've played a lot of these games that we just went through uh, that I showed you today. Uh, so like I said, there's so many different versions out there, so many different games from simple matching games to very strategic games that have been around thousands of years to, you know, brand new, uh, great games that can be, you know, family games to strategic, uh, strategic games to lucky games like King of Tokyo with the dice rolls, uh, to all these, all these simple, wonderful games that, uh, are so much fun. So I'd encourage you to check them out. Uh, maybe, uh, put your favorite, what's your AAPI kind of themed Asian American Pacific Islander themed game or historic game that comes from those regions. Go ahead and put it in the comments to the video. Share it with all of uh, all of the followers. I'd love to see that and see what you enjoy. And hopefully you've enjoyed this video. A nice broad overview of all these different games that you can check out in this sort of theme. If you want to see more of these types of videos, please let me know. And uh, I do hope to get back to reviewing and uh, should be doing some more reviews uh, over the next few weeks of coming games. Very excited to, to share those with you as well. So thanks again for watching. Please consider liking, subscribing to the channel, uh, helping, helping me grow the channel. I would appreciate that. Uh, but thank you again. Leave comments in there, uh, in the in below. Want to know your favorite AAPI themed game. And we'll catch you next time. That is how Lou sees it.